An improvement in the quality of many publishers' websites would be a great service to the comics community as well. Not enough is done with their websites to keep casual visitors interested. Instead, the sites are geared to the fans who are already familiar with the product at hand. Providing a more open sense of community would be a great improvement, as would presenting more information on the available titles, past, present, and future. Behind the scenes type content, like previews of interior art, sketches, and notes, can serve to both hold visitors' interest and give a hint of the artistry that goes into creating a comic book. Most sites offer actual comics online, but the offerings leave a bit to be desired, as they don't always provide an adequate indication of what is currently being published. So keeping these up to date and easy to access is important. Adding digital versions of back issues, as I mentioned before, and charging a reasonable subscription rate for them, the way CrossGen does, is an option that really should be explored. An email catalog of all the titles currently in print from a given company, with a brief synopsis of each story and perhaps some artwork, would be a great touch for new readers. Better yet, the publisher could offer a similar catalog or a sampler featuring a few pages from a related group of books. For instance, the Batman family of titles that encompasses Batman, Robin, Nightwing, and Batgirl in paper format to be mailed to interested parties. In addition to all of this, publishers should also seek to gain advertising space on other websites that fall outside of the typical comics fan environment. Advertising on comics news sites and sites dealing with other collectibles is all well and good, but it doesn't do much for bringing new readers into the audience. It would be wise to advertise on news sites, movie review sites, comedy sites, or any sites related to literature, art, or popular culture. The institution of Free Comic Book Day, although a brilliant idea that was a long time coming, could use improvement as well. As it stands, Free Comic Book Day isn't really doing as much to attract new readers as it could. With the selection of titles growing more diverse, there are concerns that many of these books are too different from what people expect in a comic book. While catering to the public's expecta expectations isn't the point of Free Comic Book Day, it would be wise to clearly differentiate among the books, splitting them into three groups, those that are very recognizable and accessible to all ages, less prominent but still widely enjoyable comics, and the esoteric and usually adult-oriented books. The event is not just about getting more people interested in comic books, but also to promote the staggering variety of stories available in comic book form. Accordingly, these three groups of books should be equally available and care should be taken to distribute them to appropriate audiences. Another concern with Free Comic Book Day is the venues in which the books are distributed. Making the Free Comic Book Day books available only through comic book shops doesn't make much sense. While it can serve to get people into comic book stores, it completely bypasses those readers who don't have a comic book store in their immediate vicinity. The purpose of Free Comic Book Day would be better served by getting these comics out to other places. They could be donated to libraries and youth centers, passed out on school campuses, or they could be left at any establishment that sees a lot of foot traffic or has a waiting room. Many such places have racks or shelves for free circulars or local magazines, like Tampa's Weekly Planet. Free Comic Book Day comic books can be put near or on these. Since both free comic book days have been timed to coincide with major comic book movie releases, it stands to reason that this tradition will continue. So a great idea is to bring these comics to movie theaters and hand them out to anyone who's interested. If they're meant to be given away, why not take them outside of comic shops in this manner? Yes, retailers have to pay for them. And there's the question of who will take up all this added distribution. By no means am I trying to say that these are negligible concerns, but they aren't insurmountable. Free Comic Book Day comes once a year, giving participating retailers enough time to contact a few local businesses regarding the possibility of distributing comics on their premises. Likewise, those in charge of Free Comic Book Day could contact toy stores, music stores, sports apparel stores, and the like, 
to gauge their interest in participation. Perhaps additional advertising in the books could be offered as compensation. Granted, ads in comics can be annoying, but when the comic is completely free to the reader, I doubt there would be many complaints. Distributing free comic book day comics at theaters or passing them out on campuses is an admittedly trickier proposition. It would only be feasible for retailers who have an employee or two to spare. However, there's no reason the distribution would have to be done on free comic book day itself. Free stuff is good any day of the week. Likewise, this could be done outside of regular business hours so as to not interfere with normal store operations. Distribution directly to these places could also conceivably be done from the point of origin, rather than using retailers as the middlemen. Reasonable options abound. All that's required is a strong collective effort being made, and the roots of this are in place.